God, yeah. That's all I got. Anyway, sound effect department's a little broke, all right? Baller on a budget. So we got Ikoria, Lair of Behemoth. And let me tell you, Godzilla. I did show some uh, other spoilers the other day. Actually, some of those aren't even in this video you're about to see, which has over like 25, 30 cards. Just a, a crazy amount of spoilers in this video. But uh, yeah, a lot of people were in doubt that Godzilla would be actually appearing on Magic Cards. And now it is official. And it is confirmed. Let's get into the leaks. So he started, or not the leaks, these are official spoilers. Baby, Godzilla, Ruin Reborn. I don't know why I say it like that, but I have fun. Uh, two drop creature, Frogger. Each creature spell you cast costs one less to cast if it has mutate. So that's pretty cool. That's a great way to cheat in all your little mutate cards. Whenever you cast a creature spell, if it has mutate, draw a card, then discard a card. Not too bad. I'm sure you can find a crazy ton of synergy around that, especially with stuff that uh, you perk from when you draw and discard. Not too bad. Then we have Fully Grown, which is the worst um, uh, capture I have in the entire video. Everything else is really clear, but this one, for some reason, didn't come out so good. Fully Grown is a three, uh, not three drop, but three, it's three converted mana cost, instant. Target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. Put a trample counter on it. Haru, hurray, hurrah. So that's pretty cool. So those trample counters are going to be something. Cloud Piercer is a 5-drop. I like the art on that. I think it's really neat. Now, here's the Mutate for 4. If you cast this spell for its Mutate cost, put it over or under target non-human creature you own. Excuse me. They mutate into the creature on top plus all abilities from under it. That is a mouthful, but it's pretty simple to understand. So very interesting for the mutate uh, mechanic. We're finally getting to understand better what mutate does and how it works. With reach, it's a 5-4. Whenever this creature mutates, you may discard a card if you do draw a card. Yeah, you're probably not going to see this played too much, but this would be a card that would be played like more in uh, you know, your sealed or whatnot. Uh, here we go. Here's a big boy. Ghidorah, king of the cosmos. Get a load of this handsome fella. So, man, Godzilla is definitely uh, uh, the flavor around all this. This is a five-drop legendary creature, beast, elemental, dinosaur. This thing seems ferocious. It's got the mutate for six, flying, and trample. It's already a 6-6 six, six for only five. Whoa. Now, this is the alternate art, okay? Just no, There's no confusion. They're doing the alternate art like this, so everyone's aware. Whenever this creature mutates, Exile, or is it um, the other kind? Well, um, the, um, what's it called? It is an alternate form of art. I'll stop talking. Whatever this creature mutates, <laughs> exile cards from the top of your library. Until you exile a non-permanent card, put that card out of the battlefield or into your hand. This can seem, it's not broken, but very, very strong indeed. Um, when this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-permanent card. Now, remember, when it mutates, so if you can continuously get this thing to mutate by having a stupid amount of ramp, and then also with that card where you can play as many lands as you want, you can dig them out and put them into your hand, I think. Uh, it came out last, um, last set. And then also just have a, a ridiculous pump, I'm sorry, or ramp. You can drop endless amounts of creatures. I'm just saying, it is something to consider. It'd be late game, more memeish, but I already thought of the deck. I'm like, wow, this would be stupid busted uh, for the late game, you know, to have some fun with and just play your whole entire, your whole deck really quick. Uh, pretty cool card. Zagatha Mamba and Gloom Pangolin. That's right. Just some little commons and uncommons here. The Nightmare Snake will probably see more play for sure. Uh, Nightmare Snake, whenever this creature mutates, target creature and opponent controls gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. It's a one, one. Not too shabby. There you have it. So you can mutate it, put, you know, something else, and there you go. It's fun stuff. This thing's a 1 5 for 3. It's a nightmare pangolin, pangolin, whatever. Godzilla! There he is, baby. King of the monsters. Z what does it say? Zolortha Strength Incarnate. Uh, what does that mean? Giant Strength Incarnate or something like that? I don't know. What is Zolor Zolortha? Someone help me out. Legendary creature dinosaur. It is a mythic, baby. Five drop. Trample. Lethal damage dealt to creatures you control is determined by their power rather than their toughness. So, yeah. That's pretty insane, man. 
and to take this thing out, you couldn't just like shock it and use like the minus two, minus two on it. You know, like it, I'm pretty sure it would still be there because it's lethal damage dealt to creatures you control is determined by their power rather than their toughness. This thing can get out of hand. This also says buy a box. This is one of the buy a box promos. Look, there's a helicopter. Oh my gosh, it has to be fake, Joey Moss. There's another helicopter. It must be fake. These are official spoilers everyone all right there's no joke about it yeah i'm baffled too that they um I, I think we were all caught off guard by by this drop here but man wow how amazingly cool is it that we actually have godzilla now on magic cards i mean that is really cool especially for all of us who grew up watching godzilla movies and if you're not familiar with godzilla you've been living under a rock you know uh like godzilla and uh, you should probably look into that, you know, and check out some Godzilla movies. There you go. Uh, Godzilla, Primeval Champion. This is one of the cards that I had in that spoiler video uh, a few days ago. It is a monstrous nine drop. And there is a jet, f jet fighter flying on the side here. Pretty insane, man. Uh, trample, cycling for deuce when you cycle. Titanith Rex, put trample counter on target creature you control. It's an 11-11. We did not know how big this thing was. Now we do. It's pretty massive. It isn't uncommon, so anyone could have this massive creature for them. The Huntmaster Liger, pretty cool. Four drop, mutate for three. Uh, if you cast this spell for its mutate, uh, the mutate to the creature on top of... Okay, it just repeats itself for the mutate ability. So whenever this creature mutates, other creatures you control get plus X, plus X till end of turn, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. I believe that was another one of the cards that we did show spoilers on. Man, just so you guys are aware, there are at least another, I'd say, 7 to 10 more mythics and rares, maybe even more than that, that we're going to cover. So hang in with me. Uh, Gyronda. That sounds like, um, that sounds disgusting. Gyruda, it's probably Greg Gyruda. <laughs> Doom of Depths, six drop. Legendary creature, Demon Kraken. It's got companion. New mechanic. Your starting deck contains only cards with even converted mana costs. So I believe that's like a stipulation to use this companion. And what companion is, we'll get to it in a second. But if you name this card as your companion, you can play it from outside the game. So it could be in your sideboard, and you can just play it. You can cast it from outside the game, I believe. Pretty nuts. We'll, we'll go into that in depth and more in just one minute. When it enters the battlefield, each player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. Put a creature card with an even converted mana cost from among those cards onto the battlefield under your control. Golly, man. That's, that's rock and roll right there, fellas. That is some powerful sauce. I'm not going to lie. Uh, pretty fun card, and it's only a rare, so legit. Here is Karuga, the Macros, M M Macro Sage. Yep, got it, nailed it. Look at this thing, man. Dinosaur Hippo, five drop, legendary creature. Your starting deck contains only cards with converted mana costs three or greater and land cards. Only with converted mana cost three or greater and land cards makes sense this is how you're gonna like build around certain kind of certain kind of synergies i guess when karuga the macro sage enters the battlefield draw a card for each other permanent you control with converted mana cost three or greater it's a five four so yeah you want to play this at a key time from outside the game i would imagine and boom there you go you know you just uh, get a ton of card draw out of it Pretty legit. There's not too much more to really to say on these kind of cards. It's pretty um, cut and dry how they how they operate. Lucka, Copper Coat Outcast. He he is the true Tiger King. And you're looking at him right here. Do you guys see that on Netflix? Come on, I know you guys watch that. Luca Copper Coat Outcast. Pretty slick art, man. The true Tiger King right here. Legendary Planeswalker. He's got the plus one. Exile the top three cards of your library. So the new Planeswalker. Never seen him before. The Tiger King's new Planeswalker. Weird that they introduced this. Creature cards exiled this way. Gain, you may cast this card from exile as long as you control Luca Planeswalker. That's not bad. It's a way to, you know, get some stuff out there. Uh, for minus two, exile target creature you control. Then reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card with higher converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Meh. I mean, that's not bad, actually. I'll take it. That's pretty good. 
Well, yeah, it's under the battlefield. Bada bing. Minus seven. Each creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. That's one way you can finish him, you know? And you can get there pretty quick, honestly. With a little proliferate, you can get there within a turn. That's pretty nuts, but there's a lot of board wipes going on. Not sure how potent this card's going to be. Pretty legit, though. And I don't, I, I cannot confirm if this is going to be, if someone can, if this is going to be in the Planeswalker decks or, like, the wannabe Planeswalker decks, whatever you want to call it. If this is going to be in a Brawl theme, um, it's going to be in something, you know? This is the thing that's going to be replacing the um, the Planeswalker decks, remember they talked about that? We're going to find out more for sure. Next we have Mothra, Super Sonic Queen, and Luminous Broadmoth, Broodmoth, I'm sorry. This thing's powerful. Another mythic, very, very powerful card. Flying whenever a creature, it's a four drop, only a four drop for this thing. Whenever a creature you control without flying dies, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with the flying counter on it. Shut up. That is pretty stupid. Mix this with that other card that, you know, comes where things come back after they die also. I think this is more powerful. This is way more powerful than that card because they all come back as 1-1s, one you know, but they still have their, like, uh, static abilities and stuff and all their other abilities on the card. But this thing, it just comes back and you have a flying counter put on it. Very, very interesting. Um, you control without flying death. So it comes back with flying. So your creatures that don't have flying now come back with flying, if I'm not mistaken. And if that's the case, this is insanely good. So now your Ajani can come back swinging, uh, flying up in the air if it died. But I, bl I believe you would lose the counters on it, though. Yeah, because it, it has to actually die. Then you return it. Um, here's the alternate art form of this. Very crazy how we're seeing these cards, man. Uh, I am getting kind of like a, a tiny bit of like a Pokemon theme out of it. Tiny bit. I'm not really too thrilled with it. You'll see more so what I mean in a little bit here. Um, that card is beyond busted, though. Lutri the Spell Chaser is a three-drop legendary creature. Elemental Otter. I want to say this is a rare. It's companion. Each Nightland card in your starting deck has a different name. Each non-land card in your starting deck has a different name. If this card is, wow, is your companion, you may cast it once from outside the game. There you go. If this card is your chosen companion, you may cast it once from outside the game. So 3-2 with Flash. When Lutri, the spell chaser, enters the battlefield, if you cast it, copy target instant or sorcery spell, you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. That's not too bad at all. Um, that is pretty powerful. I'm sure a lot of little is it builds would love to have something like that up in it. But interesting that you know you can't have the same name, uh, a bunch of a bunch of cards with the same name in it. Here we go. We got a whole lot of chaos going on here, guys. You get a two for one here because I messed up on this one. There you go. You get Rodin, Titan of Winged Fury on the right, and Vadrock, Apex of Thunder on the left. Let's read Vadrock, Apex of Thunder on the left. Now, this is looking crazy, like, out there Pokemon stuff. I don't even know, man. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, not hating. I think this. I think it's a new approach to how they're doing magic, but I think they are trying to steal a bunch of Pokemon uh, players and bring them over to magic. But I don't really think it matters because isn't Pokemon and Magic owned by Watsy the same or owned by Hasbro? They're all under the same umbrella. Anyway, Vadrock Apex of Thunder, three drop. Legendary creature, elemental dinosaur cat. Whoa. It's got mutate for four. Flying and first strike. That's already pretty powerful. It's a three three. Whenever this creature mutates, you may cast target non creature card. With converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. That's pretty cool. I did find it interesting that it's not, there's no black in the mana to do any of this stuff. I, I thought that was kind of weird um, for like, you know, the whole like rein, the reincarnation kind of stuff, you know. Uh, for there not to be a single black mana symbol on this card. Anybody else with me on that or am I just, am I overlooking things? Maybe I'm overlooking things. I know there's blue in there which can do that kind of stuff. White semi, you know. I mean, it's just weird I'm just, what I'm seeing there. Let me know your thoughts on that one. Uh, powerful, cool cards. Only a three drop, yeah. And I like that it has, it's an elemental dinosaur and a cat. You got to remember for tribes, guys, um, you have three different creature types in one. You have elemental, dinosaur, and cat. Now over here you have rodent, titan of winged fury, which just looks pretty ridiculous. I think it's the same card, right? They're calling it something completely different. Unbelievable. 
why why would they they just played a game with my mind right there i thought i was going crazy no i'm not unbelievable i am legendary creature elemental dinosaur same exact thing different art and they're calling it something different see right here uh vedric uh apex of thunder so that's like its sub name so then where would this come in road and titan of winged fury i don't understand why the difference here i'm sure it's an alternate art you know, or whatnot, but already, doesn't this look alternate? Maybe one's going to be for for Arena. I, I'm i baffled. Anyone else has more information on these kind of cards? By all means, please let me know. Moving forward, we have uh, Snap Dax, Apex of the Hunt. Man, Dinosaur Cat Nightmare. It's a four drop. I, I, like, cover, I like reading over everything for spoilers, so you can just sit back, do what you got to do in the background, and just listen to what the cards all do. That's why I cover every little detail on the card with you guys, reading it verbatim. Legendary Creature, Dinosaur Cat Nightmare. It's a Mutate. It's Mutate is for five. If you cast this spell for its Mutate cost, put it, one more time, put it over or under target non-human creature you own. They mutate into the creature on top plus all abilities from under it. That's nuts, man. Okay, double strike. Whenever this creature mutates, it deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls, and you gain four life. Oh, man. That is a powerful, powerful, powerful little kitty. Dinosaur nightmare. I don't want to see that thing, uh, yeah, in in my dreams. That would that would not be good. Where's the dinosaur part of it though? Like I see the cat, and I see the nightmare part of it. I really don't see the dinosaur part too much. Maybe like it's talons right there. Yeah, I guess the talons, you know. But the, a cat could have talons like that. All right. Anyway, I guess that's how it works. Pretty powerful card though, nonetheless. Holy smokes, man. Um, yeah, I'm not sure which I like more. Here we go. Omori, the collector. I really like the vibrance, the colorfulness of this card. I think it's really, really neat. It definitely pops. I already wanted it in foil. It has the companion. It's for four in Golgari colors with the hybrid casting costs. Uh, so two colorless and two Golgari hybrids. Companion, legendary creature ooze. Each non-land card in your starting deck shares a card type. Okay. You have to share a card type, guys. As Umori, the collector, enters the battlefield, choose a card type. Spells you cast of the chosen type cost one less to cast. So there you go. That doesn't take much considering there's so many different hybrid things and whatnot. You know, or not even not even hybrid. A card type, I believe, would just be a creature, right? Legendary creature because it's card type, like a legendary creature. You know, stuff like that. We'll break this down more. Spells you cast of the chosen type cost one less to cast. Not too bad. That could be pretty ridiculous. This is almost like a mini... It's it's almost like a commander in its own. It's just weird, this whole companion thing. Um, I don't know. I don't have to make it. I like the artwork on that one. Here is another version of Vaidrock Apex of Thunder. This is like the original one. So now there's three different types of versions of one card, I had to show you the art on this one as well, because this is the original one that's going to be you're going to see most of. Okay, so the other one, there's there's two variants of this card. Are they doing that for all the mythics? I really am not sure, but that is pretty out there, my guys and gals. Vivian Monsters Advocate, what are you doing, Vivian? What kind of sweet sauce are you going to pour on us today? Uh, five drop. Powerful Planeswalker. I already read over it earlier. Legendary Planeswalker, Viv. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may cast creature spells from the top of your library. That Not at any time, but you may cast them when, it, when it's appropriate for you to cast them unless they had flash from your other Vivian that you're running. Okay. Plus one, create a 3-3 green beast creature token. Put your choice of a Vigilance counter a reach counter or a trample counter on it. That is pretty neat because, you know, depending on the situation, this is very flex. Hey, I need to go ahead and be swinging and attacking a lot, but still have something to block with because they got crappy small creatures that can't do much. But if one of their small, small crappy creatures gets through, it might do something paralyzing to me. Oh no, 
I'll give it vigilance. Oh no, they got a lot of flying creatures. Ah, what do I do? We'll give our Vivian reach. Now we got little arrows shooting up at them. Hooray. Oh no, what do I do? They got these creatures. We got, and they're all small, but we can't get over them. I know, I'll give them trample. The damage just rolls on through. All right, minus two. When you cast your next creature spell this turn, search your library for a creature card with lesser converted mana cost. Put it on the battlefield and shuffle your library. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I like what I see here. Vivian, you are pretty sweet. I'm going to enjoy playing with you, girl. Mm -hmm. More ways than one. Apex of Wishes. This card. Okay, is it new? Uh, it, Luna? It, Luna? Nu, Muna? Nuna? We don't know because the, how they designed this card. Um, I think it was in poor choice. It gives you that um, that like comic book kind of theme, you know. I think they were going for here, maybe with the comic book Godzilla stuff and all that. That's what they're uh, really going after here. Pretty neat, um, but it, man, it screams like something else, you know. Like like that, we have never seen stuff like this before from from Wizards of the Coast. All right, I mean, it, it's never we've never seen nothing like this before. It's it, not even like specialty products. I don't think we've seen nothing of this kind of art, you know. Uh, it's got flying and trample six six. One of the creature mutates exile cards from the top of your library until the exile uh, permanent card. We already went over this one earlier, but I had to go over it one more time because of the alternate art. It's a six six, pretty nasty, man. Then we have Titanith Rex. We um, this was um the mini or the other uh, Godzilla kind of dude, you know. Uh, it's got the cycling for two, the trample whenever you cycle Titanith, Titanoth Rex. Put a trample counter on target creature control. Polywog Symbiot is a frog two drop. Each creature spell you cast costs one less to cast if it has mutate. Whenever you cast a creature spell, if it has mutate, draw a card, then discard a card. So that one we went over as well. Here's two we have not gone over. Void Becketer on the right and Dranith Stinger on the left here. It's covered with a stinger. Two drop human wizard. Powerful wizard though. Whenever you cycle another card, Dranith Stinger deals one damage to each opponent. We're not done yet. We still have to do five commanders. We're getting to these big creatures and other things too. Don't worry about it. Cycling for one. Discard this card. Draw a card. Deuce, deuce. Void Beckoner. Eight drop. Death touch. Cycling for three. When you cycle Void Beckoner, put a death touch counter on target creature you control. It's an eight, eight for eight. Nightmare horror. Pretty insane. Space Godzilla. Void Invader and Huntmaster Liger. These are the alternate art versions of the card. So that's how they're getting away with using Godzilla in the card names by using something else. I mean, they definitely got licensing for this. They definitely got licensing for this. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware, but Godzilla's probably not making a whole lot of money these days, you know? Um, they, they did make quite a bit, you know, uh, a couple of the films, um, um, but I mean, really, they're not doing a whole lot as of late. So, this is pretty sweet. I'm sure they're making, they're going to make a decent buck off of this. And they enjoyed uh, saying, okay, we'll give you licensing, no problem. Uh, Huntmaster Liger, there you have it. And then we have for our commander players out there. These are all new cards for the commander decks coming out. These are your commanders. Uh, four drop, a whole lot of stuff going on there. When Jarina Kudro enters a battlefield, create a 1 1 white human soldier creature token for each time you've cast a commander from the command zone this game. So this can be your commander. I don't, I mean, I guess you get a choice of them. Other humans you control get plus two, plus zero. It's a three, three. Oh, wow. That is a very powerful uh, human commander. Uh, you definitely want to go the human route if you're going to be playing this. Pretty insane. Calamax, the Storm Sire. Cool art on this guy. Four drop, legendary creature, elemental dinosaur. Whenever you cast your first instant spell each turn, if Calamax, the Storm Sire, is tapped, copy that spell. You may choose and you may choose new targets for the copy. Whenever you copy an instant spell, put a plus one plus one counter on Calamax. It's a four four. Its mood changes with the weather. And vice versa. <laughs> That's kind of cool. I like that. The weather changes with its mood. That's pretty sweet. Big old beast, man. Uh, no, he's not a beast. I'm sorry. He's an elemental dinosaur. You can't even say stuff like that, Joey Moss. Then we have Cathril Aspect Warper. <laughs> Five drop nightmare insect. Legendary creature. Um, when the Aspect Warper enters the battlefield, put a flying counter on any creature you control. If a creature card in your graveyard is flying... Repeat this process for first strike, double strike, death touch, hexproof, 
indestructible lifelink menace reach trample and vigilance then put a puzzle puzzle encounter on Cathril for each counter put on a creature this way it's a 3-3 that's pretty legit I like that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things that duplicate things or allow you to, um, you know, put something else on something else. A mutate crap. This is a nutty set, man. This is a really nutty set. Atrimi, the ever playful. Look at this thing. I, I like that it's like peeking like underneath this rock right here. If you at first glance, it looks like it's one of his legs, but no, he's like on top of this like like branch or, or ledge or some rock shaped structure or something and he's looking underneath it it's kind of cute oh I, look, I think it's a log okay it's a hollow log no more i look at it now okay a hollow log he's just checking out and he's looking at you like i see you <laughs> playful i wouldn't want to play with this thing though six drop mutate trample whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player return target creature card with mutate from your graveyard to your hand it's a six six you would almost think that if you dealt damage, instead of bringing it from your graveyard to your hand, it would just go on the battlefield or something, you know? But um, this one seems one of the more underwhelming, uh, you know, cards, if you ask me. You know, I don't see this one being too much uh, for price. Gavi, Nest Warden, is a five-drop human shaman. You may pay zero rather than pay the cycling costs of the first card you cycle each turn. That's not bad. A little, little, you know, little, little deal there. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a 2-2 two, two red and white dinosaur cat creature token. It's a 2-5. There you have it. That can get pretty uh, out of control, too. I know a lot of people do like them cycling decks, and uh, cycling's getting a huge burst of uh, fun sauce, man. That is the entirety. Holy spoilers, it was a long video today, but um, had to cover everything. Let me know your guys' thoughts on this. What cards are you looking forward to? What are you hoping to see? What kind of crazy hybrid mixture of mutators of all types of nastiness? You know, um, and definitely if you enjoyed this video, by all means, take a moment. Punch the like button. It does help out. And uh, share this video. People, I'm sure, want to see what kind of spoilers are out there. I know I do. Maybe if you share it, I'll come across it. And I'll be like, hey, that was me. I made that video. That's pretty cool of you to share that, my ninja. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are subscribed, congratulations. You are uh, you should be a very proud person. I appreciate you. Skadoosh.